Masayuzaki is a young man breathing on a snowy day when suddenly a girl appears. While he has a flashback of his life, he admires the beauty of this girl. He remembers how everyone made fun of him because of his name, NASA, which is similar to the National Aeronautics and Space Administration from America. Despite the teasing, NASA decides to be better than them and puts effort into overcoming these mockeries. Later, after discussing his future with his teacher and learning that Sakura is entering the most privileged high school in Tokyo, NASA, the self-proclaimed man who aims to attain the speed of light faster than anyone, I think, he is like Flash. I'm fast as fuck, boy. On a snowy day, with many thoughts ongoing in his mind, Nasa Yuzaki encounters a turning point in his life. He spots a cute girl on the other side of the road and is captivated by her. Without any hesitation, he believes that talking to her is the reason he was born. Brimming with infatuation, he crosses the road. However, halfway across, a speeding truck Kun comes toward him, delivering a terrible blow. Everything goes black. When he opens his eyes, he sees the girl in front of him, covered in injuries just like him. It turns out she took most of the blow, protecting him. Despite her own pain, she instructs the truck driver to take Nasa to a hospital. Ignoring her injuries, she tells Nasa to forget about her and disappears into the night. Thinking to himself, Nasa believed she looked like a princess going back to the moon, as she mentioned before passing out. Quickly waking up, Nasa asks the driver about the girl, but he's advised not to move due to injuries. However, today is not a day to waste time. He must find her. Despite worsening conditions in the snowy blizzard, he eventually locates her at a bus stop. The girl is surprised by Nasa's actions and tells him to sit down. Nasa becomes very embarrassed being so close to her, even more so when she lends him her support. Seeing his condition take a turn for the worse, she decides to get someone to help him. However, he can't miss this opportunity, so he tells her how he thought she was a princess. He recounts a story where the emperor and an old man should have tried harder to stop her from going back to the moon. Finally gathering the courage, Nasa confesses his feelings to the girl and asks her to go out with him. After a moment of silence, she turns around and tells him that if he marries her, she'll go out with him. Without hesitation, Nasa shouts a strong yes before fainting. Later, Nasa wakes up in a hospital, and as the days go by, he continues to recover and study. After passing his exam in the new year, instead of going to high school, he decides to focus solely on jobs that involve serving customers hoping to meet that mysterious girl again. However, the day seems like it will never come, and soon he is living alone in a small apartment. Two years pass since Nasa's encounter with the mysterious girl when she suddenly arrives at his place, completely shocking him. She finally introduces herself as Tsukasa. After settling down at the table, Tsukasa takes out a marriage form, shocking Nasa even more. She reminds him of the day they met and how he had agreed to marry her. After reaffirming his determination and feelings for her, Nasa fills out the relevant parts of the form, clearing away any doubt and confusion he still felt. Common sense couldn't overcome her cute smile. Nasa hands back the form to Tsukasa, who looks it over. As they head out to get their marriage finalized, Nasa is still a bit unsure if they can simply get married by handing over a piece of paper. While walking, Tsukasa muses over how nice her new name, Yuzaki Tsukasa, sounds. When she asks Nasa what he thinks, he says it's a lot better than his, which is written as Hashiora but is pronounced Nasa. He realizes that she never made any funny remarks about his name. She tells him that his name is truly beautiful, causing him to think about how unreal this marriage is but how his desire to marry her is definitely real. They soon finalize their marriage and also get a commemorative plan. Tsukasa suggests that they try holding hands now that they are married, and Nasa gets so flustered about holding her hand that he starts to yearn for other things he can now touch. What do you mean by that? Not just hands, which Tsukasa ends up hearing. <laughs> Nasa is waiting alone in his apartment for Tsukasa to come back, wrapping his head around the fact that they are now married. He quickly realizes there's a possibility they will be sleeping on the same bed, and that makes him panic. In the desperation of the moment, he tries to figure out a way for them to sleep comfortably on one bed. However, Tsukasa soon returns, and to Nasa's surprise and embarrassment, she finds him hugging a pillow while imagining himself with her. I think guys he is choosing his favorite position. If you know what I mean, comment your favorite position. Lord have mercy. She tells him that she went to get her luggage from a convenience store locker. Nasa then wonders if her family would be worried about her being out so late but Tsukasa explains that she doesn't have a home now. Upon hearing this, he decides that having one futon is fine, and he can sleep on the floor. 
However, Tsukasa suggests that she stay at a hotel for the night. Nasa seems displeased with the idea until she tells him that, since she is his wife, she won't be going anywhere. This takes him completely aback. He then wonders why she became his wife in the first place and asks her why she married him. However, she says that it's a secret, much to his annoyance. He tells her that they can buy a second futon so she doesn't have to go, and she agrees to this, as long as they can try out a memory foam one. They visit a store to buy a futon, with Tsukasa asking if this will be Nasa's first present to her, to which he answers yes. Once they come back home, a sudden existential question crosses Nasa's mind about marriage. Nasa is quite overwhelmed, with a blur roaming in his apartment. Anyway, it's time to catch some sleep, and they finally both start to settle down for sleep. Unfortunately, Nasa is unable to get any proper sleep due to being completely distracted by Tsukasa. After watching her toss and turn while sleeping, Nasa wonders if he should give her a goodnight kiss, but decides against it, as our romantic protagonist wants their first kiss to be different. Tsukasa then suddenly gets up for a drink, and upon returning, accidentally falls asleep on top of his bed, pulling the covers off as she slides back down to ground level. In short, Nasa can't sleep with his wife so close. How is possible for a man to sleep if a girl beside to him? What? I don't believe it! What do you think guys? Are you able to sleep? The next morning, Nasa wakes up first and can't unsee his sleepy wife lying in front of him. He notices that things have changed quite a lot from the day before, and now there's a certain person in the same room. It's a good morning, and after getting up and changed, Tsukasa decides to prepare breakfast. When she takes a look inside Nasa's fridge, she becomes quite surprised at the amount of food he has, all labeled and well organized. He tells her that he studied dietetics and worked out that the best meal for him was hot pot every day, to get the same taste every day. Unimpressed by this, Tsukasa tells him to wait while she prepares better food. After 10 minutes, they sit down to eat, with Nasa surprised by the amazing results she produced. Once they finish their meal, they decide to go to the nearest bathhouse, as Nasa's apartment doesn't have a bath, and he knows the owner well. Nasa wants to see Tsukasa after she takes a bath, so they head out. After buying various things for Tsukasa, they arrive at the Arisa bathhouse, where two sisters work. They start with Kane Marisugawa, who is already working when they arrive. She is completely shocked that Nasa has brought a girl with him, thinking he studied so much that his libido withered away. Kaname likes dirty jokes, and in particular, she is not a delicate young girl. Intrigued by the situation, she then asks if they are dating, but Nasa instead tells her that the two of them are married, shocking her even more. After congratulating them, Kaname invites Tsukasa to take a bath. When Nasa tries to join, Kaname stops him and demands an explanation, thinking Nasa couldn't possibly have a girlfriend. Kaname asks if Nasa has told her sister, but he hasn't. Kaname insists that since he's decided to marry Tsukasa, he must make her happy. Nasa, now determined, declares his love for his wifey just as she walks in, causing embarrassment for both. Inside the bathhouse, Nasa is conflicted about how to act during a typical bathing. He believes that if he acts normally, his wife will magically appear, but reality proves to be more challenging. Meanwhile, Tsukasa is enjoying her bath until Kaname's sister appears in the back with her. She introduces herself as Aya Arasugawa, the eldest daughter of the bathhouse. Aya apologizes for watching Tsukasa while she was bathing and asks if she would like her back washed to make up for it. After some persuasion, as Tsukasa doesn't like being touched, she takes her up on the offer. Aya remarks on how beautiful Tsukasa's skin is, comparing it to silk. However, she then realizes that silk is a cloth that comes from silkworms, and no matter how pretty her skin is, comparing it to insect excrement is not the right choice. Instead, she decides to compare it to an iPhone X for reasons unknown to Tsukasa. The girl gives her name as Arisa, and Tsukasa introduces herself as Yuzaki Tsukasa, with Aya assuming she's Nasa's little sister. After Nasa's bath, Tsukasa meets back up with him, accompanied by Kaname's older sister, Aya, due to the earlier misunderstanding. Aya doesn't realize that the two of them are married, and neither of them is aware of this. Tsukasa is told how Nasa helped support the Arisa family, and their business when they fell on hard times. Tsukasa appears disappointed with hearing how grateful Aya is to Nasa, but he doesn't notice this. The two of them then leave the bathhouse and head back home. Tsukasa says how cute Aya seems to be with Nasa, completely agreeing with her and not realizing his poor choice of words. Just as he realizes this, he sees her looking at a church wedding and remembers what Kaname told him about their marriage. He asks if she's concerned about that thing, but she assumes he is talking about Aya and gets the wrong idea. 
Tsukasa, awaiting NASA's return, decides to clean the place but finds out, much to her surprise, that her capable hubby has already cleaned everything in plain sight. She doesn't want to risk seeing what sort of secret things he might have hidden away, and so we will never find out if NASA is a pervert. So, there's another thing that can be done around the house, cooking. Soon, the doorbell rings, and Tsukasa, assuming it's NASA, goes to answer it. To her surprise, she is greeted by a young girl named Chidos Kajinoji, who claims to be Tsukasa's sister but not her real sister. Chidos refers to Tsukasa as her sister and comments on how the place Tsukasa is now staying in is a shabby apartment complex and doesn't suit her. Before she can finish, Tsukasa peacefully shuts the door in her face. However, Chido starts weeping so hard outside that Tsukasa decides to open the door again. The reason Chidos can look out for Tsukasa is that their grandmother, Takiko Suomi, is worried. Indeed, Takiko knew Tsukasa's location, and Chidos forced her to give up Tsukasa's position and meet her without Takiko's permission. All of that was for the sake of her niece Sama, but Tsukasa can't see any reason for Takiko's involvement. She ends Chidos's attempts to bring her back by telling her that she is now married. NASA arrives and finds Chidos, who, wowed by his kindred spirit, decides to tell him what happened. She describes the person she has problems with, and just when she starts appreciating the fact that he was randomly listening, a pressed Tsukasa pops out behind her. She quickly realizes that NASA is her husband. She tells NASA that the girl is Chidos Kajinoji, a girl who was taken in by her family. NASA casually introduces himself to her and starts a conversation. Despite Chidos' protests, she states that she will not accept him as Tsukasa's partner in marriage. Surprisingly, NASA shows his good communication skills by acknowledging that she's not wrong for thinking that, due to how sudden it all was. However, Chidos won't simply accept that, and she does the most obvious thing to do in these cases, she kidnaps NASA to Chidos' villa. In the villa, Chidos is classy and won't stoop to twitter, as there are better ways to wreck his marriage. Chidos is more convinced than ever before and with the help of her maids Aurora and Charlotte, she wants to portray NASA as a cheater. However, when Charlotte takes the role too seriously, her concocted plan crumbles. After losing time with a confusing game, Chidos loses sight of NASA, who flees into the mansion. NASA starts looking for Tsukasa's room, assuming she lived there, and finally finds one with her smell inside. He notices a glass case with a moonstone, and his surprise grows when Charlotte appears with a large sword, breaking her way into the room. Damn! She tells him that he isn't allowed in there and proceeds to start attacking him. However, Chidos and Aurora arrive, shouting at Charlotte not to be so reckless in that room. Unfortunately, she ends up damaging the case with the moonstone in it. NASA quickly manages to fix it, preserving the moonstone and also works out from Chidos's reaction that the stone is real. Chidos tells him that their grandmother borrowed it to ease Tsukasa. Upon hearing Nasa's confusion about this, she realizes that he doesn't know what Tsukasa is and asks if he knows anything about her past. He answers that he doesn't, which causes Chidos to get angry that her sister married someone who knew nothing about her. Charlotte intervenes, saying that Nasa did save Tsukasa's moon and hugs him as thanks. However, Aurora takes this chance to take a picture of them and edits it to make it look indecent. Just then, Tsukasa appears, taking the picture and remarking about how nice it looks, much to Nasa's shock. Chidos tells her to get a divorce because of how terrible he is. Tsukasa seems to agree to this, telling him to follow her so they can talk it over. Once they leave the room, it becomes clear that they fled instead. Tsukasa reveals that she was just pretending so they could escape, and if she was mad, things would be much worse for him. They soon find themselves in an old church built in the Meiji era. Seeing her so bright and happy, Nasa realizes what devotion is. He starts to tell her that if something good happens to him, she'll be the first to know. If something bad happens to her, he'll carry the burden with her. They'll share everything, support each other, and that he doesn't want her to ever regret choosing him as her husband. If this sounds like a proposal, it is because it is one. And what better way of sealing it than a kiss, after swearing to give her his eternal love. Tsukasa loves movies, games, and pop culture in general, and the absence of a television in Nasa's apartment is seriously undermining the foundations of their marriage. Furthermore, Nasa has little knowledge of films. To overcome such a prominent lack of culture in Nasa's life and save the marriage, there is only one possible solution, a new TV. Indeed, Tsukasa can't stop talking about movies and shows in front of NASA, and it's not like she's trying to push her hobbies into NASA's mind. Well, actually, she is, but she wants to be able to share her excitement with him as they watch a new series. Shortly, all this talk about films and anime, her great passion, makes her more lively, 
and NASA likes this new side of his wife he has never seen. At the Arisugawa bathhouse, Tsukasa is taking a bath while NASA is talking with Kaname. Kaname suggests to NASA that a couple needs rings to symbolize their love. There's that diamond thing they swear their love to, but NASA doesn't know the little particulars. There are two types of rings when one talks about marriage, engagement rings and wedding rings. Engagement rings are the basic ones you give to girls when you are proposing, and they can be quite expensive. On the other hand, wedding rings are the paired rings that men and women put on their ring fingers. On the way back home, Tsukasa convinces NASA to stop by a public park and sit on a bench. Once he realizes that, he doesn't take too long to steal a kiss from Tsukasa's lips in broad daylight. A kiss out in the open is a good step forward for a couple, even though Tsukasa can't help but call him a bold dwarf. NASA goes back to talk about the rings again. They are already married, so engagement rings are not needed. NASA wants them to show their powerful love but he doesn't know how much a diamond ring can cost in real life. Tsukasa knows and refuses the idea to buy them. She convinces him to go to the most expensive jewelry store to make her point. However, NASA almost bought the most expensive one, and she drags him out. NASA explains that as long as they have a ring that shows their eternal love, they can feel each other nearby even when they are apart. In short, he wants to buy them for Tsukasa, as she feels quite lonely while he is at work. Once she realizes that to make NASA happy, she accepts buying them but only the cheapest ones. As she will remember that day whenever she looks at that ring, she will remember how NASA nearly spent a fortune on their rings. But in the end, they bought the cheapest ones. Most importantly, she will remember how kind NASA is and how much he cares about her. Tsukasa puts her hair up every evening before bed, but as she moves a lot while sleeping, they come loose almost instantly. Also, she's a sleepwalker and always goes to drink water in the middle of the night while half asleep. On her way back, she usually tries to grab NASA's covers and then falls asleep in her futon. This is her usual sleepwalker routine, but not this time. Stay hard! Instead of her futon, she goes into NASA's bed, and poor boy can't catch any sleep tonight. The situation is too much to bear for NASA, and it ends when Tsukasa, turning around, starts staring at NASA. Panicking inside, he doesn't understand if she is awake or not. She kisses him and rolls back on her futon. He didn't sleep a wink after that. In the morning, NASA, thrilled by the previous events, is daydreaming of sleeping in the same bed as Tsukasa. Indeed, he is willing to buy a new, larger apartment. They'll be tight to sleep if they both stay in the same room for too long and sleeping is a pain because they sleep on different beds. Tsukasa is a sleepwalker even there. A good reason to relocate shows up on its own. NASA's apartment is too small for the two of them, but before they buy a new home, they need a guarantor. It could easily be NASA's parents, and NASA never told them about their marriage. Therefore, a phone call is needed, and even though the first replies sound like, Oh, fuck off then. I'm sorry I mean who, ones he has never heard before, his mom calms down once she hears that his wife is this super cute girl who saved his life. After the call, Tsukasa decides that she would like to meet NASA's parents, but he is unsure about introducing her to them due to how weird it could be. However, NASA's mom texts him, saying that if they don't come to visit, she won't be their guarantor. Faced with this, NASA relents, and the two of them decide to go to Nara to visit his parents. Indeed, NASA's parents aren't from Tokyo but from Nara, and news of their future travel to Nara quickly reaches Chidos through her spy maids. Tsukasa also decides to get a camera for the journey, and their everyday lives to make their secret wedding diary. Even though the purchase was meant for her, NASA's lust awakens, and he can't stop taking photos of his wife. So she confiscates the camera. They haven't had a honeymoon yet, and so this seems like the perfect occasion. They will kill two birds with one stone, meet NASA's parents and enjoy some time together. They decide to take a late night bus to Kyoto because it was way cheaper than the train. Meanwhile, Chidos and her two maids are chasing them. Chidos hasn't accepted their marriage yet and is hoping it ends once the bus stops at a late night service area. Chidos, with her maids, is eager to find any rifts between NASA and Tsukasa's love. She thinks that even small problems can put an end to a male-female relationship. Also, she believes that there is no need to cause any of them. In effect, these problems start on their own. But as soon as a problem seems to appear real, making Chidos all excited, it disappears in a blink of an eye. They turn every little problem into a new and unique way of flirting, making Chidos's plan more and more pointless over time. While Chidos is plotting her plan, Tsukasa and Nasa are deciding what to eat. While Nasa is willing to eat something from a chain restaurant, Tsukasa exhorts him to try something else, as he can eat that stuff back at home. Following her reasoning, Tsukasa suggests something they were suggesting by hand. 
The Sioux tastes like someone put some wine slices on top of cod. It's exactly what you would expect, to the point that it is unexpected. The only thing that could spice it up is the lime that Hubby challenges her to eat. Chittos, annoyed by their continuous flirting while Nasa was absent, makes her first move and appears in front of Tsukasa, who was sitting all alone. She suddenly starts a tough discussion, asking her what she's even doing there, and that she is not a normal girl. But when the discussion starts bending toward Tsukasa's past, a journalist reporter appears, fearing that appearing on TV might alert Tsukasa's stalker. The trio runs away, and the bus is about to pull out. So Nasa and Tsukasa decide to leave with Chitos shaming after them, asking Tsukasa why she's even getting married. Back on the bus, Nasa wonders about what Chido said, but Tsukasa reassures him, saying that it's only natural some people would oppose their marriage. She wonders if his parents would be the same, but he tells her that he's sure he can convince them. The next morning, they arrive in Kyoto, with Nasa excited about the potential of doing some sightseeing there after visiting his parents in Nara. But Tsukasa's suggestions of going to a bakery or the manga museum deflate his enthusiasm, and he asks if she's not interested in seeing the historical landmarks. After seeing Nasa's disappointment, she agrees to see them. Suddenly, Chido stubbornly wants a confrontation with them. As long as she doesn't accept the marriage, she will not allow their relationship. This improvised situation makes Nasa think things over. He wants to make his marriage happy for everyone, and so he invites Chidos to talk with just the two of them but he isn't the only one who has had an idea. With the main target to show the world how much of a pathetic fool Nasa is, Chidos will play Nasa's lover, and depending on his performance, she will see if he is a worthy man or not. But Nasa has done a lot of research, taking Chidos to a lot of nice places, but she is more wowed by his organization and his kind character rather than anything else. Though his strong character makes her dubious again, Mostly the fact that he doesn't know anything about Tsukasa irritates her a lot. Nasa evaluates the little things he knows about his wife, thinking that his meeting with Tsukasa was fate. However, Chido still doesn't see this as a good reason, thinking that fate is just something people use as an excuse. At the end of the day, he doesn't know, but she said she'd go back to Tokyo for now. Tsukasa is worried she will not be able to get along with Nasa's parents, but Hubby doesn't believe so. He will be the one to introduce her, and he will make sure they know she is the cutest girl in the universe. Late in the evening, their taxi finally arrives at the home of Nasa's parents. Both of them are very nervous about meeting them. Nasa's mother, Kanoka, starts to open the door but is too flustered to see her son's wife and quickly goes back inside. Nasa manages to convince her to meet Tsukasa and asks where his dad is, to which Kanoka replies that he's in the living area and hasn't moved since the morning. They all go inside, with Tsukasa being introduced to Nasa's father, Inishi. After some awkward silence, Inishi asks Nasa if he'd like to go take a bath. However, Nasa is very wary about leaving Tsukasa alone with his parents. She tells him it's fine if they want to talk to her. Still sounding a bit unsure, after Nasa leaves the room, Inishi suddenly prostrates himself before Tsukasa, thanking her for saving Nasa's life. He continues by saying how proud he and Kanoka are for raising such a good son despite their faults. If he decided to marry the person who saved his life, they have nothing else to give besides happy tidings and best of luck. Anishi finishes off by asking that she take care of Nasa from now on. Tsukasa thanks him for his gracious words and asks that they also take care of her from now on. As they get ready for bed, Kanoka tells Nasa that they put in an extra futon for Tsukasa and warns him not to get too carried away since they will be sleeping in the next room over. What do you mean by that? Nasa quickly realizes what she meant and gets completely flustered by the situation presented to him. This time, they are both sleeping on futons, and there isn't any height problem between them like before. So, his wife is now right there with her guard down, just within his reach in a futon next to him. Though he soon realizes how painful it is, and his arm doesn't take long to become numb. On the other hand, his wife is so close to him that he can perceive her body warmth and smell. The fragile equilibrium easily breaks, and Nasa then asks for a goodnight kiss instead, which Tsukasa agrees to, albeit very embarrassingly. The next morning, after waking up and going outside, Tsukasa is met by Anishi, who has trouble working out what to talk about with just the two of them. Tsukasa then mentions being an archaeologist, which Nasa had told her before. Upon hearing this, Anishi excitedly takes her to his study, 
There, she surprises him by being able to read a book that supposedly he had never been able to understand before. NASA soon arrives in the study and is surprised to see Tsukasa there, due to her apparent dislike of historical things. In the afternoon, NASA and Tsukasa finally get down to doing some sightseeing, with Tsukasa deciding that visiting historical sites with NASA will make them more interesting. They visit the Nara Park and the Tadai Jai, taking pictures of each one. After visiting the site where the ruins of Haijokaya once stood, Tsukasa starts talking about how 13 years ago, so many people lived there, going about their daily lives. But she quickly brushes this aside, and they decide to film a funny video instead. Later, they bid farewell to NASA's parents as they head back to Tokyo. However, upon arriving back at their apartment, they find that it has completely burned down. NASA's apartment is now just ashes, but the plant commemorating their marriage is miraculously intact. Bringing relief to NASA fortunately, he had already organized his bank book and other important things in a safety deposit box. With nowhere to go, Kaname kindly offers for them to stay at the Arisugawa bathhouse until they find a new place. Kaname thinks that hosting NASA and Tsukasa at the bathhouse is a nice way to thank NASA for everything he has done for the place. Luckily, there is a pretty big building they don't use in the bathhouse that already has two futons and some furniture. Tsukasa thinks it's a sign that they are well liked by them, as people reached out right away when they were in trouble. NASA likes the idea of living at the Arisugawa bath house, and things seem fine for everyone living there, Kaname, Aya, and their mom. Aya has a crush on NASA but hasn't realized yet that he is now married. She is an airhead and still hasn't figured it out. During a normal evening in which Aya is peacefully misunderstanding the fact that Tsukasa and NASA are married, she casually discovers that NASA and Tsukasa have the same last name. Just when one might wonder how long she will continue to misunderstand things, Aya's mom pops up with a simple statement, revealing that Tsukasa is Nasa's wife and devastating Aya's heart in the blink of an eye. Aya's brain can't handle this giant piece of information, and she starts screaming. To make things worse, after her mom realizes that it didn't know, she coughs up the fact that it has liked Nasa. Aya's first encounter with Nasa was during math class when she was 10. There was a problem nobody could solve, and NASA solved it effortlessly. However, she never dared to confess her feelings to NASA. Despite the awkward situation, Aya decides not to sulk over her unrequited love. She musters courage and pride to congratulate NASA and Tsukasa on their marriage. Meanwhile, NASA and Tsukasa have a bunch of dirty clothes, and Tsukasa wants to do some laundry. Initially, NASA is willing to go alone to a coin laundry, but Tsukasa has a problem. It would be embarrassing to let him see her they decide to go to the coin laundry owned by the Arisugawa family. Nasa can't help but notice that Tsukasa is wearing a tracksuit, as many of her clothes were lost in the fire, and the surviving ones are being washed. She also hasn't got anything under the tracksuit, and Nasa finds himself quite unable to resist taking a photo of his embarrassed wife. According to Nasa, girls can stay cute for a long time because they always strive to look cute. However, once a husband stops helping his wife stay cute, the girl might transition from being a cute wife to an average roommate. It's shopping time, and Nasa is delighted until Tsukasa suggests he chooses the new dresses for her. Nasa's pure and innocent taste starts to show, and there's something else Tsukasa needs to buy. They bring out everything from the storage space to their room, making it seem old-fashioned. Without Kaname, it's just the two of them and NASA seems eager to try all kinds of embarrassing things. The next morning, NASA receives a call from his former landlord, who asks if he is interested in moving into a new place he has built. However, NASA hasn't made a decision yet, even though he knows they can't keep staying in debt to the Arisugawa family for much longer. Kaname tries to convince NASA and Tsukasa not to leave, realizing that living there probably makes it hard for them to have privacy. However, she quickly changes her mind when she hears that a new apartment is being built on the lot where the last one burned down. The landlord offers them to move in without any security deposit, or initial fee, along with keeping the same rent as before. With such a good offer, they can't refuse at least a visit to another identical apartment that will be their next residence. Tsukasa, enthusiastic about the idea, suggests they act like a married couple during the visit. The new apartment is beautiful, and the view from above is even more appealing. They are particularly drawn to a bathtub where you can see outside while bathing. Tsukasa expresses her desire for a bathtub like that in their new apartment, and Nasa, in his mind, has a lustful thought about them taking a bath together. After the bathroom, they explore the bedroom, which has a huge double-sized bed. Nasa nervously asks Tsukasa if she wants to sleep on one bed, and she shyly agrees, considering it an improvement. 
However, after checking out the apartment, the landlord calls, revealing that it was not their apartment, and there was a mistake. Kane Marisugawa starts her day early, waking up every morning at 5.30 to get the bathhouse ready. Balancing this with high school is challenging, but with the arrival of Tsukasa, she is more than happy to accept help, even though Tsukasa insists, and she initially refuses. Despite that, Tsukasa insists, feeling the need to repay her debt to Kaname. With Tsukasa's help, the cleaning process ends earlier, allowing Kaname to express her gratitude. She thanks Tsukasa not only for the help with the bathhouse, but also from the bottom of her heart for saving Nasa's life. Kaname begins to understand why Nasa fell in love with Tsukasa. When Chitos returns to Nasa's apartment, she discovers that nothing is left, it has burned down. While expressing relief that Tsukasa is unharmed, Chitos is left with a burning question. Where is Tsukasa living now? Tsukasa tries to evade the questions, but Chitos's persistent inquiries force her to playfully tease Chitos, convincing her that she lives in a playground with electricity and gas. However, the prank is short-lived, and Tsukasa returns home. This time, Chitos reacts quickly and follows Tsukasa to the Arisugawa bathhouse. Inside, she finds Tsukasa, Nasa, and Kaname discussing the idea of a takoyaki party, apparently the favorite pastime of cool young people. Kaname bombards Chitos with questions about why and how Tsukasa lives there. Tsukasa reveals that she sleeps every night on the reception floor of the Arisugawa bathhouse with milk bottles as pillows. The prank doesn't last long, as Nasa feels bad for Chitos, who is too naive. Chitos, along with Chitos's maids, who have never been in a bathhouse before and are nervous, decides to take a relaxing bath to cool their heads. After the bath, Chitos greets everyone and leaves. Chitos quickly realizes that she has been tricked once again. Since everyone is present, they decide to attend the takoyaki party, as Kaname suggested. This would also be a chance for Tsukasa to get to know Aya better. Aya is extremely happy about the idea and joins the party to test if Tsukasa is good enough to be Nasa's wife. The food not only looks good but also tastes amazing, and Aya can't help but compliment Tsukasa. Now, her conviction is starting to crumble. Street Fighter V becomes a fundamental pillar of their takoyaki party, and even though they haven't had a single takoyaki yet, a video game tournament begins. The absence of an award prompts the need for one and Nasa offers to perform any task asked by the winner. Aya and Tsukasa engage in the gaming competition, and despite Aya's initial advantage, Tsukasa, who hates to lose, turns the tables with a change of console and controller. In the end, a double co marks a draw in their competition, and they mutually appreciate each other's gaming skills. Time passes, and Nasa is working so hard that he becomes one of those people who never know when to take a break. His relentless work goes unnoticed until his cute and considerate wife, Tsukasa, notices his red face. Taking his temperature, she discovers a worrisome 39.8 degrees Celsius. Concerned, Tsukasa insists on looking after Nasa until he gets better, despite his objections. As Nasa starts feeling better, he decides to change his clothes, given how much he has sweated. Tsukasa offers to help him and although both are shy about the idea, they eventually agree with some clear limits. The discussion about this becomes a bit too much for both of them, and it abruptly ends. Nasa's cold has improved significantly, but he still has a bit of a fever. He rarely gets sick, and this sudden fever surprised even him. Tsukasa points out that he never gets sick or injured because he simply doesn't realize it, referencing the time when he chased her in the middle of a snowstorm despite being heavily injured. Tsukasa's concerns about Nasa's health make him reconsider taking breaks when working too much. Now, it's time for them to catch some sleep, but Tsukasa can't rest well as she worries about Nasa's health. Meanwhile, Nasa, half asleep, makes a confession about wanting to go with Tsukasa to the summer festival. As Aya and Kaname suggests that Tsukasa should wear a yukata for the summer festival, as it's customary for couples. He believes it would also make her hubby feel much better. The festival is that evening, and Tsukasa decides to change into a yukata. However, there's a small dilemma, as her husband, Nasa, is in the same room. Initially, Tsukasa insists that he must look away while she changes, but Nasa wonders if, as her husband, he's not allowed to watch. Tsukasa eventually permits him to watch, but only for a brief moment. Nasa can't resist sneaking a longer look, appreciating how pretty Tsukasa looks in the yukata. The summer festival is lively, with numerous open stalls. Tsukasa stops at a takoyaki stall, even though they recently had a takoyaki party. She prefers the non-fried ones, and they enjoy the peaceful evening with fireworks blooming in the sky. As they watch the fireworks, Nasa reflects on how much he loves his current life and wife, 
Days pass, and NASA finally gives Tsukasa her own phone, delighting her. Tsukasa excitedly mentions that she will become famous after configuring her phone. NASA adds Tsukasa as his wife to his contacts, and Tsukasa does the same. Later, Tsukasa talks with Kaname, who also adds her online, showing her a radish profile picture. Aya adds Tsukasa as well, showing her animated crush. After a while, NASA is called back to his old job to assist the manager with some issues. Despite Tsukasa's disapproval, she wishes him good luck and hopes for his early return. Tsukasa spends her day eagerly waiting for his message, contemplating whether to send him a sticker with a bunny expressing how much she misses him. However, she decides against it, thinking it might distract NASA. The day goes by with Tsukasa feeling nostalgic and longing for a message from her husband, who didn't contact her the whole day. So, Tsukasa assumes that NASA won't come home early and finally receives a message from him, expressing how much he misses her. However, he mentions that he won't be returning home at night but will be back in the morning. At 3 a.m., NASA returns to his home quietly, trying not to wake Tsukasa. Although Tsukasa is awake, she welcomes him warmly as she couldn't sleep at all. So, they both go to bed, and before that, Tsukasa gives NASA a goodnight kiss. She then asks if she can join him in his futon, and this leads to passionate kisses between them. As Tsukasa expresses how much she missed him, NASA considers taking things to the next level. But Tsukasa playfully acts cute, and they end up hugging instead. The next morning, Tsukasa reflects on her behavior from the previous night, feeling a bit awkward. Kaname interrupts her thoughts and jokingly asks if they had any intimate moments while she was asleep. Tsukasa denies it, asserting that such things are normal for a married couple. Meanwhile, Charlotte informs Cheetos about the conversation she overheard between Tsukasa and Kaname. Cheetos is surprised but acknowledges that it's part of married life. Later, Charlotte teases Cheetos about the possibility of catching Tsukasa and NASA in the act. The next morning, Tsukasa surprises Nasa with a morning kiss, leaving him stunned as he's still getting used to such gestures. Tsukasa decides to test Nasa's focus while he works by changing the TV channel to a mind games program. Despite the distractions, Nasa impressively answers the questions without looking, leading Tsukasa to briefly wonder if he's randomly pressing keys. Maya and Charlotte join in, trying to test Nasa's focus, but he continues to answer correctly. So, the three friends got together for a strategic meeting. During this meeting, Charlotte suggested that Tsukasa wear a maid costume, and Aya asked him to do it too. The final challenge started, with Tsukasa dressed as a maid, talking to Nasa as if he were a maid. This distracted Nasa for a short time, but he still managed to answer the last question, disappointing Charlotte and Aya. They thought it was unfair that he could stay focused even with Tsukasa dressed as a maid. Later that night, Nasa talked to Tsukasa about how much he liked her in the maid dress and expressed that he would enjoy it if she wore it more often. Tsukasa explained that Charlotte was the one who left the uniform there. The following day, Nasa talks to Kaname and shares his pieces, such as finding doctors, glasses, and school uniforms attractive. Someone overhears their conversation and mentions that dating while wearing school uniforms has become a trend. Kaname, being the supportive person she is, encourages them to pursue their dreams. So Aya requests Tsukasa to wear one. That night Tsukasa borrows can school uniform like the stereotype of a high school girl in front of her husband this arises the horse of Nasa who after the demonstration asks Tsukasa one more time to dress as a high school girl. So she does in excitement Nasa ask her can he touches Tsukasa, which she replies, yes but only in night, but for now this no hand establishment but he can remove her stockings which she does and they kiss. The next day, Nasa wakes up from a dream where Tsukasa is wearing a high school uniform and playfully tells him he seemed to be having a nice dream. Nasa, who usually wakes up early, is surprised to find himself waking up late. Tsukasa, being an early bird, kisses him and informs him that breakfast is ready, which continues to surprise Nasa. After breakfast, they begin working together. Tsukasa watches a movie that she doesn't like, and when Nasa asks why, she explains that despite not fitting her house's theme, she enjoyed it for its good characters, a strong father-son relationship, and a cool ending. But Tsukasa wanted to experience a scene similar to AC that would ignite her imagination. Nasa suggests that they set up a home cinema once she finishes her work early. Thinking it's a special occasion, Nasa chooses a large, reliable cinema setup. They head downstairs and enjoy the beautiful scenery. When Tsukasa wants to buy popcorn, she's advised against it due to the film's two and one divided by two hour length, as it might be inconvenient for her to go to the toilet and miss a crucial scene. 
However, she decides to do what she wants, observing the varied expressions on the faces of the others, bewilderment, surprise, anger, nervousness, and emotion, as she reaches the climax of the film. When the protagonist arrives at the bathhouse, he has a conversation with Sonata about the wedding. Sonata expresses that she's not worried about not having a wedding, considering it normal nowadays. However, strongly desires a wedding, especially to see his wife in a wedding dress. This raises the question of having a wedding for the young couple. Despite Su's enthusiasm, Tsukasa refuses the event, finding it embarrassing and costly. Nas, wanting to make it happen, suggests they do it the next week. Tsukasa then asks him how to go about it, so he does a funny simulation where he simply calls, and the wedding magically appears. Tsukasa is concerned about her earnest husband, expecting him to inquire about the cost. However, Nas assumes it costs at least 150. Tsukasa brings who asks about Nas's budget. He has around $1,500 in yen, surprising Kanon. Kanon then reveals the cost of a good wedding service, which is 7 million yen or $775,000. This shocks the protagonist, who realizes he could buy a car, a house, or at least an urban apartment with that money. He expresses disappointment, thinking it would be cheaper and easier. In another scene, Chidos is seen exercising with her servants, and Charlotte asks her about the possibility of a wedding between Nasa and Tsukasa. Chidos is unsure but mentions that if there is one in the future, she would attend to support Tsukasa, even if she doesn't particularly like Nasa. Elsewhere, Nasa's teacher notices a decline in overall grades in the class since the junior year of the young high schoolers. This puts her in a predicament, and she feels compelled to improve their grades. One of her colleagues tries to dissuade her, but she refuses, citing that she has no time for dating. On her way home, she wonders about Nasa's life, hoping he hasn't become a delinquent like many other boys who dropped out of school. By chance, she encounters her former pupil and learns that Nasa is now married. Expecting the worst, she advises him to introduce her to his wife. Nasa's wife welcomes the teacher, who tries to find something negative but can't. She ends up congratulating the couple before leaving. Curious about Nasa's future, she asks him about his plans, and he expresses a desire to go to high school and look for a job eventually. However, for now, he just wants to enjoy the moment with his wife. The teacher's thoughts linger as she considers accepting an invitation to the cinema from her partner. Meanwhile, at the bathhouse, a customer with a sinister look arrives, claiming to have unfinished business with Nasa however. Tsukasa, not liking his attitude, refuses to disclose Nasa's whereabouts. The two argue, and the man buys a ticket for the bath. When Nasa arrives and sees the situation, he is pleased to discover that the mysterious visitor is his cousin. Jinga. Though Jinga has a sinister appearance, he proves to be a good boy and a successful student in preparatory school. Curious about Nasa's marriage, Jinga asks for proof of his love and kisses Tsukasa. Nasa accepts, but Jinga interrupts, acknowledging that their love is genuine. He then shares that he and his friends found an abandoned cat in the street. Nasa takes charge of the situation and brings the cat to a veterinarian, insisting on thorough examinations to improve its health. Tsukasa is surprised by her husband's intensity in caring for a cat. Realizing that they will need to find a home for the cat once it leaves the vet, Nasa volunteers to take care of it. Tsukasa creates a huge list of things the cat needs, and Jinga eagerly takes on the responsibility. However, Nasa is not impressed with the cat's behavior. After eating, the cat loses interest in him, walking away with a flat stare and sleeping on Tsukasa's shoulder. However, there's still hope for Nasa in the morning. Tsukasa explains that the cat calling him for food means she trusts him and just wants to be spoiled. Realizing that his wife wants to be pampered, Nasa tells her she's cute, and they share a kiss in front of a surprised onlooker. Toast becomes Nasa's best weapon to win his wife's heart as he uses it to distract her while eating. Taking advantage of the moment, Nasa expresses his admiration for Tsukasa's fresh and soft scent, bringing him closer to her. However, a new adversary emerges in the form of the jealous cat vying for Tsukasa's attention. Despite the cat incident, Jinga gifts Nasa two tickets to an amusement park, and they decide to visit Mayama Amusement Park. The following day at the park, they notice it starts to rain, prompting them to buy cat and bear raincoats. Nasa enjoys this because it makes Tsukasa look even cuter than usual. At the same time, Chidos and her maids are also at the park. Upon seeing the married couple, Chidos decides to relax and enjoy the park first before figuring out what they are up to. Their first attraction is a scary one, but to their surprise, the couple enjoys it instead of being scared. 
The next one has a space theme, and at the exit, they run into Tanaguchi Sensei. She explains that she's there because her colleague Tanaguchi Sensei won two tickets and invited her. Tsukasa quickly catches on, suspecting that Tanaguchi Sensei might have invited her for a date, wanting to spare NASA, who has zero social intelligence, from any awkward situations. Later, they confirm Tanaguchi Sensei's interest by observing her nervous behavior around Yanagi Sensei. Encouraging him telepathically, NASA and Tsukasa casually go to the same pirate themed attraction, where they see both senseis. They discuss the possibility of Tanaguchi Sensei having a chance if he plays his cards right, but they aren't certain. In another waiting line, Tanaguchi Sensei wants to explain that he didn't win the tickets but bought them to declare his love for Yanagi Sensei. Unfortunately, a teenager in front of them beats him to it, making the situation uncomfortable for him. Meanwhile, NASA and Tsukasa head to a buffet since it's lunchtime. Chidos and her crew eventually find NASA and Tsukasa and decide to observe them at the buffet. To their surprise, the couple is still flirting. NASA proposes a game where they serve each other's food and exchange it at the table. However, NASA realizes that the meal he prepared for his wife is terrible. When he sees the delicious meal she had, Tsukasa stops him, saying that the one he made was made with love, and that's what matters. Chidos's crew wants to join in, but Chidos stops them, claiming it would attract too much attention. At night, they all enjoy the fireworks festival. Kanaguchi sensei and Yanagi sensei are also there, and Yanagi sensei impulsively expresses her desire to spend the rest of her life with him. Although it seems like a slip of the tongue, Tanaguchi Sensei reciprocates her feelings, saying that he loves her too. NASA possesses a unique ability to take on other people's problems and help them effortlessly. Tsukasa notices this as he repairs Konam's vacuum cleaner. Aya approaches NASA for help with her grades, which are in bad shape, especially with final exams looming at the end of the month. Despite the challenging task, NASA agrees to help her. He is focused not on the difficulty but on his dedication to helping others, something he deeply enjoys. Tsukasa is impressed by her husband's tireless work ethic. NASA tirelessly types on the computer keyboard without showing any signs of fatigue. Tsukasa observes that NASA maintains the same posture since morning, only admitting discomfort when she expresses concern about his health. When Tsukasa decides it's time for a massage, it's NASA's first experience with one. As she massages him, he begins to feel more relaxed, and the experience starts to turn him on. Despite his newfound desires, he is determined to reciprocate and give Tsukasa a massage to express his gratitude. Tsukasa, however, becomes visibly embarrassed but appreciates the gesture as NASA continues to rub her shoulders. In the scorching month of June, the heat doesn't deter Kaname who puts NASA on the spot with direct questions about his relationship with Tsukasa. She seeks details about how long they've been together and what they do. NASA feels a bit awkward and wishes to escape the conversation. While casually scrolling through Twitter, Kaname discovers that a kiss can have different meanings depending on the area you kiss. She then prepares a flawless plan for NASA to savor the moment all night long. NASA opts for lighter clothing than usual, and he starts noticing subtle cues from Tsukasa. Surprisingly, Kaname gives the list to Tsukasa much earlier than NASA expected. The night unfolds with an abundance of kisses and tenderness, continuing until the next morning. Weeks pass, and surprisingly, Kaname and Aya's mother visit. However, Kaname receives her mother in a rather cold manner, causing her mother distress. Returning to the present, Kaname gifts NASA some tickets for a trip to thermal waters. Unfortunately, neither Aya nor Kaname could go, and Aya's mother also refuses due to the negative association with her past honeymoon. NASA accepts the tickets, albeit feeling a bit embarrassed about the situation. Initially hesitant, he talks with Tsukasa about the trip and the underlying issue. Tsukasa, understanding the situation, also accepts to go. Kaname says her goodbyes as the couple goes on their first honeymoon. During the train ride, they talk about their expectations and how they look forward to relaxing. Upon arriving at the destination, they are shocked by the immense size of the place, comparing it to the Arasugawa bathhouse, which seems small in comparison. In their room, they find it to be extremely luxurious, and they thoroughly enjoy the opulence. NASA suggests that Tsukasa go to the bathroom, expecting to share the open bathroom they have in the bedroom. However, they end up going to the communal baths and are surprised by the luxury they find there. After NASA has some good thoughts, he goes out to reunite with Tsukasa but instead finds an old woman who needs help getting to reception. Being a helpful person, NASA decides to assist her. At the reception, an old woman expresses her desire to go to her room, and NASA, despite having a moral crisis, agrees to help her. On their way, they encounter Tsukasa 
who reveals that the old lady is Takiko Tsukayomi, the woman who agreed to their marriage. However, Tsukase exposes her lies, as Takiko is not a frail older woman. Takiko accepts her guilt, admitting that she wanted to mess with NASA. Upon entering Takiko's bedroom, they discover it is massive compared to the one they're sharing. Takiko explains that she is incredibly wealthy. They discuss why Tsukasa chose NASA, and Takiko learns that NASA is a kindred spirit. In a surprising turn of events, Takiko gives them tickets to three thermal waters as a test. Takiko also reproaches Tsukasa for not expressing her love to NASA and suggests that she should double it. This embarrasses Tsukasa but fills NASA with hope and happiness. The next morning, NASA reads a shoujo manga where a comedic incident occurs, reminiscent of the protagonist accidentally seeing the love interest taking a bath. Tsukasa arrives and models a beautiful kimono she rented. Their first stop is Yubake, an ancient place where they traditionally conduct thermal waters with wooden structures. The couple wanders around, and Tsukasa explains how the wooden conduct turns the waters into thermal salts. Next, they decide to buy souvenirs for Kaname and Aya. The couple enjoys some thermal eggs, and Nasa takes the opportunity to capture cute photos of his wife eating. While wandering, Nasa asks about Tsukasa's relationship with Takiko. Tsukasa explains that Takiko used to be her tutor and took care of her for a long time. Now, Takiko is not worried anymore, especially since she found out that Nasa is a wonderful husband. As they continue exploring, they reach a thermal water river. Nasa wonders why it's challenging for them, being husband and wife, to bathe together. He sees a sign that says mixed bathroom and wants to propose going there. However, Tsukasa refuses, embarrassed by the idea. At dinner, they enjoy a delicious meal, and after resting, Nasa gathers his courage and finally asks Tsukasa to join him in the bath. She accepts, with the condition that he must go first and cannot turn the lights on. In the bath, Nasa wonders if he could be any luckier, and Tsukasa arrives, entering the tub. In the bathroom, Nasa and Tsukasa express their love for each other, and Nasa playfully teases Tsukasa's shyness, leading to a water splash fight between the two. The following morning, Nasa feels like the luckiest man on earth. While having an internal monologue, Tsukasa appears behind him, claiming to know what he's thinking. She instructs him to go bathe and return for breakfast. During breakfast, Nasa wonders why Tsukasa acts so cold and embarrassed. When he brings up the idea of bathing together, she becomes visibly embarrassed. However, she surprises him by showing Takiko's ticket and scolding him for not mentioning it earlier. After visiting all the baths, Nasa suggests saying their goodbyes to Takiko. Tsukasa initially dismisses the idea, deeming it unnecessary, only for Takiko to appear and call her cold-hearted. Nasa proposes taking a photo of the trio, and after they take it, Tsukasa claims that the trip should only have memories of the two of them. Alone, Tsukasa suggests creating those memories right away. Returning to Tokyo, Nasa reflects on how quickly time passed and expresses his happiness in sharing his life with Tsukasa, who echoes the sentiment. Nasa asks Tsukasa if, outside the thermal waters, she would consider sharing the same bath with him again sometime. Tsukasa replies that it's not a bad idea, and the couple returns to Tokyo happily. Back home, the air conditioner of the main couple is broken, causing Nasa to consider buying a new fan. They head to an electronics store to purchase one and then visit NASA's old friend Nekiri's store to find tools for insulating the air conditioner. To their surprise, NASA's old friend Nekiri is a young girl who studied in the same high school class. She is extremely astonished to discover that NASA is now married, as she never expected him to be married at all. NASA admits that he wasn't interested in romantic matters until he met Tsukasa, and now he can't imagine going back to not being interested. He expresses confidence that his interest won't fade and plans to dedicate his life's love to Tsukasa. Continuing with the story, the couple installs an air conditioner in their room to combat the hot weather. However, they soon realize a common issue that arises when sharing a living space, differences of opinion about the ideal temperature. Nasa and Tsukasa can never agree on whether it's too cold or too hot. In search of a solution to their temperature disagreements, they come up with a compromise, setting the thermostat to number 26. The next morning, Nakiri, Nasa's friend, doesn't initially believe that Nasa is married. When he visits her shop to express gratitude for helping with the air conditioning, Nakiri reveals that she doesn't want to marry. In early July, Tsukasa encounters a mysterious young girl while working in the bathhouse. Kaname returns home from school and introduces the girl as Kagami, a classmate who mistakenly thought it was a holiday and didn't attend school. Kagami has something important to tell Kaname. Kaname, noticing Kagami's clumsiness and kind-hearted nature, begins to feel remorse for her initial judgment. 
She opens up to Tsukasa about her feelings, realizing the importance of not judging people based on their appearance or awkward personality. Kagami, feeling appreciated and valued, understands that both Kaname and Tsukasa are kind individuals. Later, Nasa is with his wife, but something seems off. There's a hidden issue, and Nasa is unsure if he did something to make her sad. In such times, Kaname becomes the person who can provide suggestions and guidance. The truth eventually surfaces. A single word can have different meanings for boys and girls. Nasa learns the importance of expressing words kindly to his wife regularly. Nasa decides to implement Kaname's suggestion of never neglecting a kind word for his wife. During a break, he gets absorbed in reading shoujo manga. Tsukasa notices his intense focus and can't resist teasing her husband. As she playfully messes with him, the big question arises, why is he suddenly reading shoujo manga? Shyly, Nasa confesses his secret entertainment, and Tsukasa takes the opportunity to playfully make him share all the things he learned. Nasa compliments Tsukasa on her beauty, personality, and spirit, which brings happiness and fluster to Tsukasa. She is so delighted that the next morning, she happily assists Kaname while still wearing a smile. In a flashback, a child wanders around some ruins, expressing concern about not having food and worrying about her future. A mysterious woman comes to her aid, comforting her and giving her food. This memory is cherished by Takiko in the present. In the present, Tsukasa is having trouble with the remote control and asks Nasa for help. He quickly identifies that the issue is with the batteries. After fixing the problem, Tsukasa asks if Nasa thinks she's stupid. Nasa denies this, praising her fierce attitude, social intelligence, and kind-hearted nature. He reassures her and helps her recover her password. Later, Nasa talks about Tsukasa's beauty and culinary skills, admitting that he has gained weight from indulging in her delicious food. He realizes that Tsukasa, on the other hand, remains slim and has a pleasant scent. Surprised by the sudden embrace, Tsukasa notices Nasa has put on weight. Emotional damage! Initially denying it, Nasa eventually confesses that it might be because of her delicious cooking. Tsukasa, finding Nasa cute regardless of his weight, assures him that she will continue to feel that way. However, Nasa is quick to react, declaring that he must start exercising to lose weight by the time Tsukasa returns home. Later, Tsukasa suggests that Nasa's mission is to run 10 kilometers every day. She asks Kaname if he thinks Nasa can handle it, and Kaname notes that Nasa is relatively fit, excelling even in physical education. Nasa confidently agrees, but after just one kilometer, he finds himself already feeling tired. Despite his efforts, he struggles with the exercise. Tsukasa offers to help, but Nasa refuses, stating that as her husband, he must be strong enough to protect her. Even though Nasa struggles with a fraction of a pull-up, the chapter ends with Tsukasa expressing that she saved him when they first met, and that she will be the one to protect him. They plan to have lunch, but their plans are interrupted by Takiko, who invites them to go camping. Tsukasa initially refuses, but Nasa likes the idea and wants to go camping. Tsukasa eventually agrees, and Takiko gives them ohagi, a Japanese sweet that a certain girl gifted her 70 years ago, before leaving. The next day, Tsukasa still doesn't want to go camping and tries to convince Nasa not to go. However, Takiko promotes the event, even inviting Aya and Kaname, who are excited about the idea of gambling. Tsukasa's efforts to dissuade Nasa are in vain, as he is determined to go gambling. Puma and Nasa's cousin, Jinga, also join the party. Chidos and her maids decide to go as well, with Chidos claiming that Nasa isn't suited for these types of events. Later, everyone is gathered to discuss the route for camping. There are two options, one involves a four-hour walk, and the other is a car ride. Kane mops for the car, citing work, while the rest decide to go on foot. On their way, Aya realizes that the journey is exhausting, and Kuma falls behind the group. Tsukasa goes back to pick her up, and during their walk, she shares knowledge about poisonous mushrooms and imparts a bit of botanical wisdom. As they continue, both get tired, and they decide to take a shortcut. Meanwhile, Nasa and the others are walking on the planned route and encounter Chidos, who reassures them that Tsukasa will be fine, as she's not like any other girl. True to Chidos's words, Tsukasa and Kuma quickly catch up with the group, having taken a shortcut. At the gambling zone, away from everyone else, they all enjoy themselves. Nasa and Tsukasa start a conversation until they are surprised by Takiko's presence. Despite Tsukasa's objections, Takiko stays and mentions that she bought this zone because it offers a clear view of the stars, almost as if one could touch them. 
She emphasizes the importance of intimacy between husband and wife, a sentiment Nasa agrees with. He expresses gratitude for the invitation and showers Tsukasa with compliments, revealing the deep love he holds for her. Later, Kuma disappears, causing everyone to worry. Aurora explains that it's a closed area, so she can't be too far. The group, including Nasa, searches for her. Nasa gets lost and eventually decides to rest on a rock due to fatigue. Moments later, it's revealed that Kuma had only gone to the bathroom. Tsukasa finds Nasa and wakes him up. Curious, Nasa questions why she set the condition of marriage before dating. Initially mysterious, Tsukasa eventually opens up and confesses that it was a test to gauge the sincerity of his feelings. Grateful for his honesty, she admits to being happier than ever. Under the light of the full moon, they both declare their love for each other. Later that night, the group enjoys dinner, courtesy of Toiko. Suddenly, there's a revelation. This gathering is actually the reception for Tsukasa and Nasa's wedding. Konami narrates the story of how Tsukasa and Nasa met, leading to their happy marriage. The group congratulates the couple, and Tsukasa, surprised, asks what is happening. Konami explains that she and Toiko planned the surprise reception to celebrate their love. Toiko assures Tsukasa that she gathered all the people they love to make her feel a little embarrassed. After a somewhat awkward PowerPoint presentation, Toiko encourages them to go on stage and share a speech. Tsukasa, feeling shy, hesitates, so Nasa steps up and delivers a heartfelt speech. He expresses his desire to cherish the feelings for his wife alongside the people they love, thanking everyone for coming. Toiko then unveils another surprise, a cake. She puts a veil on Tsukasa, and the couple cuts the cake together. Grateful for the happiness their friends bring, Nasa and Tsukasa share this special moment. Later, the group gazes at constellations, and Nasa explains them until they get bored. Cheetos brings out fireworks, and everyone joins in the celebration, leaving the couple alone briefly. Cheetos, being the third wheel, is separated from the couple. Eventually, everyone regroups. Cheetos, somewhat opposed to celebrating, questions why they got married. Nasa explains that humanity marries for love, wanting to bond and grow stronger together. Later, Toiko approaches Nasa and confesses that she feels responsible for Tsukasa not meeting him during his two-year wait. Nasa, however, expresses his gratitude for marrying Tsukasa and doesn't hold any grievances. He then walks into the forest and finds Tsukasa contemplating the moon. They discuss their surprise reception, and Nasa asks Tsukasa why she married him. She responds that life is short, and they should cherish the people they have, honoring promises to friends and parents, while also promising eternal love to each other under the starry sky. They return to the campsite where their friends have prepared a special tent for them. In bed, Nasa goofs around with Tsukasa until they fall asleep. The next morning, Toiko offers Nasa delicious coffee by the river. She suggests that such activities should be enjoyed with his wife. They make toast together, and Toiko, resembling Tsukasa's grandmother, is about to reveal something when Tsukasa interrupts. The camping day concludes, and they return home. Nasa recounts the experience of attending a wedding reception, and recalls his grandmother's words. The landlady of his old house contacts him, informing him that he can soon live there again. They visit the renovated house and are motivated by the possibility of a bigger bed. They contemplate moving, which upsets Cheetos, as she won't be able to eavesdrop on their activities. As they discuss living alone and how to hug someone of smaller stature, the focus shifts to Toiko. She recalls Tsukasa telling her about staying with Nasa for two more years and feeling frustrated at not fulfilling Tsukasa's dream. Toiko collapses. She returns to Nasa and Tsukasa, still playing like nothing happened. However, she receives a distress call from Cheetos, and they rush to the hospital. At the hospital, they find Grandma Takiko in a dire condition. Nasa learns that Grandma Takiko had a task to accomplish but realized she wouldn't be the one to do it. To fulfill her mission, she gives Nasa a moonstone and tasks him with making Tsukasa happy. Nasa accepts this responsibility, and as Tsukasa asks about Grandma Takiko's cryptic words, Nasa expresses his commitment to make her happy for the rest of her days. That's it for this video. Watch the following video, and I'll catch you in the next one.